New Hope TV, your encounter with God. This morning we're going to be talking about the blood of Jesus. Come on, nobody's excited about it. I'm going to be talking about the blood of Jesus. The very mention of the blood of Jesus should get you jumping up and down. Because if it was not for the blood of Jesus, you and I wouldn't be sitting here this morning. Come on, shout hallelujah. Oh, there is power in the blood. Come on. There is power in the blood. Shout amen. There's victory in the blood. Amen. There is healing in the blood. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. The blood of Jesus is throughout scripture. It's throughout scripture. But what does Christ's bl blood mean to us? I'm going to look at Joshua chapter 2. And reading from verse 18 to 19. I'm just going to pick up a few places where you see the power of the blood. And it reads, Behold, when we came into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. Rahab, the woman spoken to in this passage, was a harlot in the city of Jericho. And as the Israelites came to possess the land, we all know the story. Her city was destined for destruction. And she, along with the city, but she was delivered. And her life was transformed simply by tying a scarlet cord in her window. Simply by tying a scarlet cord in her window. Now this cord here represented the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ at the time. And it pointed to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. In fact, all of the Bible is about Jesus Christ and his blood. Every part of the Bible is about Jesus Christ and his blood. His blood redemption. And you will find this scarlet thread throughout the word of God. Hallelujah. You will find the scarlet cord throughout the entire Bible. The blood of Jesus. Amen. The prophecy of the blood of Jesus from the very beginning of human history is revealed when Adam and Eve sinned. God shed innocent blood in order to make them clothes. From animal skins. We see that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 21. Now this is a picture. Of the covering of righteousness. That we receive. When the Lord Jesus Christ died for us. In Genesis chapter 4. We read that Adam and Eve had two sons. We read that Cain and Abel. They wanted to worship God. And Cain sacrificed the fruit of the ground. And Abel had already learned that God demanded blood. So he brought a lamb. God accepted the blood of Abel's lamb. But he did not accept Cain's offering. Why? Because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Because the shedding, without the shedding of blood in Hebrews chapter 9 verses 22, it says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Then we see that God told Abraham to sacrifice his long-awaited son Isaac. In Genesis chapter 22, just before Abraham plunged the dagger into the quivering heart of his son, an angel stopped him. Abraham saw a ram caught in the, thick, in the thicket. And Isaac was set free. But an innocent lamb's blood was shed instead. And then God wanted to deliver his people from bondage in the land of Egypt. And we see on the night of the Passover, God instructed each house to slay a lamb and put the blood on their door. God said in Exodus chapter 12, reading from verse 13, when I see the blood, I will pass over. 
And in the tabernacle and later in the temple, thousands upon thousands of sheep, oxen, turtle doves were killed and their blood spilled as sacrifices for sin. And finally, and finally, the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross. And his death was the fulfillment of all the prophecies and promises. Somebody say amen. In Revelation chapter 3, chapter 13, verse 8. Revelation chapter 13, verse 8 proclaims that he was slain before the foundations of the world. He was slain before the foundations of the, of the world. Much before Adam and Eve. It says in Revelation 13, 8, proclaims that he was slain before the foundations of the world. He came to die. He planned to die. He lived to die. And he was born to die. And we've seen the blood of Jesus is throughout Scripture. The blood of Jesus is throughout the Scripture. What does the blood of Jesus mean for us today, church? What does the blood of Jesus mean for us, blood-washed saints, today? The power of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Somebody get excited. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Do you know that there is power in the blood of Jesus? Do you know, church, that there is power in the blood of Jesus? If you know, then shout amen. Hallelujah. There is power in his blood. His blood redeems us. His blood redeems us. There was a price against us that we could not pay. There was a price against us that we could not pay. But the blood of Jesus redeemed us this morning. The blood of, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm saved and sanctified. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Oh, God is good. 1 Peter chapter 1. Verses 18 to 19. For as much as he know that he were not redeemed with corruptible things, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. How many of you know that I am justified this morning? I am redeemed. I am justified this morning. Let's look at Romans chapter 5 verse 9. Romans chapter 5 verse 9 says, much more than having now been justified. Say, I am justified. I am justified by his blood. I am justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. I am justified by the blood of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, I am forgiven. Hallelujah. I am forgiven. The enemy may say no, but you say, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Come on, somebody say the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And his grace is sufficient for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are saved by grace. And I'm forgiven by grace. Hallelujah. It's because of the blood of Jesus. How many of you know that his blood brings us into fellowship with God? His blood brings us into fellowship with God. This is the power of the blood. It brings us with into fellowship with God. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 30. What does it say? But now in Christ Jesus... Who sometimes were far off are made nigh, brought near by the blood of Christ. Without the blood of Christ, man is long way from God. Without the blood of Jesus, man is far away from God. But because of his blood, because of his blood, he shed his blood for you. He shed his blood for me. What a God we serve this morning. And because of the blood of Jesus, I am brought close. 
I am brought nigh. I am brought close to the Father. And we can have fellowship one with another. Somebody say amen. amen. How many of you know that his blood makes peace? His blood makes peace with God. Man by nature is at war with God. Man by nature is at war with God. And we can only come to God on his peace terms. The blood atonement. The blood atonement. The Bible says in the Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. By him to reconcile all things. To reconcile some things? No. All things unto himself. Somebody say that his blood makes peace. Come on. His blood makes peace with God. How many of you know that the blood of Jesus cleanses? His blood cleanses. Not only does it remove the punishment of sin, but it removes the pollution as well. Hallelujah. I don't care what sin you've committed this morning. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 7 it says, The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from how many sins? From all sins, somebody shout all this morning. From all sins, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sins. Hallelujah. If you come short of the glory of God, you get down on your knees and you begin to believe that the blood of Jesus has washed you and can wash you and will continue to wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, from all sins. Hallelujah. When God looks at you, God the Father looks at you. He looks at you worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Don't think you're unworthy. It's only because of the blood of Jesus that it is upon your life. Hallelujah. He looks at you and he says, yes, my child. He is my child and he is worthy. Hallelujah. His blood gives power over the devil this morning. I'm here to tell you that the blood of Jesus gives you power over the enemy. The blood of Jesus gives you power over the devil. The blood of Jesus gives you power over darkness. Hallelujah. It is the blood that Satan fears. Somebody say yes. It is the blood that Satan fears. He runs. He flees. He can't come next to you when you are covered with the blood of Jesus. Do you know the blood of Jesus speaks a better word? Hallelujah. He hates the blood of Jesus. He cannot come nigh the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood gives power over the devil. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him. Who? Satan. And they overcame him by what? By the blood of the lamb. Hallelujah. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb. They overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb. The devil doesn't want you to learn about his blood this morning. He hates it. He hates it. In fact, he's far away from this place. Somebody shout amen. Come on. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Yes. He is worthy. The blood of the lamb. I have power to overcome the enemy. I have the power to overcome them. Somebody say that. Come on. I have the power to overcome the enemy. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their. And the word of their. You share your testimony. It ne you never stop sharing your testimony because you were lost in darkness and sin. You were bound in chains. But when I met Jesus, he set me free. Hallelujah. He broke the shackle of sin over my life. And now I'm free to live my life of victory. That is an amazing testimony. I'm bought by the blood of Jesus. If you have to say that, say it. But that's how they overcame. In everything, you got to give thanks. In everything, the very breath that you breathe is a testimony this morning. He brought us through the lockdown. 
Look at this. We are all sitting together, one with the other, having fellowship. That is a testimony of his saving grace and his provision and his protection. You can never be exhausted of the testimony. The very testimony when you see your children home at night is a miracle. Hallelujah. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. My children are home. Safe, without scratches. God is good. How many of you can say God is good? All the time, church, and all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. I am no longer a stranger to the covenant of promise. When I accept Christ and his blood washes me of my sin, I am no longer a stranger to the covenant of promise. Ephesians chapter 2, reading 12 and 13, it says, That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, somebody say, but now. But now, in Christ Jesus, you were once, were far off from being brought near by the blood of Jesus. But now, hallelujah, I am close to the promise of God. I am walking in the promise of God. I am fellowshipping one with the Lord and the Father of God and the Spirit of God. Hallelujah, I am no longer to the covenant of promise. When you come to the Lord, there's a covenant. When husband and wife come together, they make a, a covenant. A covenant cannot be broken. And sad to say, there are so many covenants that are broken in the world that we're living in. But I'm so glad for the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Where covenants do not break. Just like a marriage covenant that you make one with the other. It's so important that we keep the covenant that you make, your vows you make between your husband and wife. The same thing is with your bridegroom, Jesus Christ. You make a covenant with him. And it's such an amazing covenant because the benefits of the covenant, covenant is awesome. Maybe my, mess, my next message would be the benefits on the covenant but it's such a beautiful thing to walk in the promises of God. Amen. You need to read up on the promises that God has for every one of you. And we need to begin to walk in his promises. Not out of the promises, but in the promises of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. I have been declared righteous. I have been declared righteous. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, reading from verse, tw reading verse 21, says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the what of God? The righteousness, that we may become the righteousness of God. That is the power of the blood this morning. Hallelujah. That I have been declared righteous. Some people say, no, I'm not worthy of, of serving God. I, I'm not, I have to be perfect. I cannot do this. I cannot do that because I'm full of sin. Do you know that when you accept Jesus and when his precious blood washes away your sin and you are a born again Christian, hallelujah, you are saved and you are sanctified. You are the redeemed of God. God declares you as righteous because you put on Jesus, hallelujah, and you become Jesus and you wear on righteousness and you are declared the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. How many of you know that the blood of Jesus sets you free? The blood of Jesus sets you free. In Galatians chapter 5 verses 1, 1, it says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. Somebody say amen. Come on church, how many of you are born again this morning? You don't look born again this morning. How many of you are in chains this morning? Because I don't see your hands up. 
Somebody's chained up your hand to the, to the chair or to the side next to your husband. Come on, I am free in Jesus. Hallelujah. His blood has made me free this morning. His blood has set me free this morning. I'm a new creation. What a stand for Christ. Do you know when somebody declares in the baptism that they belong to Jesus Christ, heaven stands. Heaven stands. I don't know if Jesus is weeping, but maybe he is. But heaven stands to welcome everyone who declares that he is the son of the living God. Hallelujah. I am free this morning. I am no longer condemned. I am no longer condemned. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation on you. I have been separated from the world and declared holy to God. That's what the blood of Jesus does. He separates us from the world. You are called out of darkness. How many of you know that you cannot be a part of the world? You cannot be a part of the world. You cannot enjoy the worldly things. The pleasures of this world will not get you anywhere. We, the, the only thing that would happen to you is you will be depressed. You will be stressed. You will be um, so messed up in your mind. There is no peace of God. Nothing. That's what the world has to offer you. Maybe for a moment you enjoy whatever pleasure for a moment. That when you accept Jesus Christ, you're separated. You're called out. We are a, what is that verse? We are a chosen generation this morning. Hallelujah. We need to be strong in the Lord so that we can go to the person who was on drugs. Go to the person who is messed up and say that God can bring you through. That there is victory in Jesus. I am set free and God can set you free. Hallelujah. You can serve the God who owns the planets this morning. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. I can proclaim total victory through the blood of Jesus. I can proclaim total victory through the blood of Jesus. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Unto the death. They loved not their lives. You die daily. You die daily. Daily, daily you die to your flesh. You know, the, the, the early saints, they didn't care about their lives. All they cared was that the gospel of Jesus Christ is spread. They didn't care where they ate. They didn't care what they wear. They didn't care the sh about the shoes on their feet. They didn't care about their lives. They said that Jesus has to be spread to every part of the world. Everyone needs to know who Jesus is. And that's the same command that God has given the church this morning. That we need to be a witness in these last and closing days. Do you know that Jesus is coming back soon? And there are many of our people, many of our relatives who do not know Jesus. We need to share the gospel of God. We need to get crazy that we don't stop sharing about Jesus Christ. Because if we don't share the love of God, then they're going to be lost forever in a lake of hell. You don't want to see your husband in hell. You don't want to see your wife in hell. You don't want to see your children go to hell. You don't want to see your mother and father be lost forever. No, God has given us a commission. And that commission is to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. But you need to get up. You need to be willing. You cannot say, no, I don't know what to say. I don't, this is what they say. Share your testimony. I don't know what to say. I get stuck. Many of us face that. 
See, you need to pray at all times and say, Holy Spirit, make me a witness. Make me a witness. Make me a witness. Let me share the gospel with my friends. Let me tell somebody about you, Jesus. You begin to pray. You begin to prepare. Write down your testimony. Write down the word of God that will be able to be effective when you begin to testify. You need to want and hunger to be a testimony in these last days. Otherwise, you will be stuck. But church, the church needs to rise up. It's enough of just me, my husband, and my children. Amen. But what about somebody that do, does not know about Jesus? I already told them till I'm blue in my face. I keep telling them, but they'll never turn. We hear that also. You don't give up. I love to share this testimony and I'll share it with you again. Um, my brother-in-law's um, grandmother, her name is Nana Set, uh, no, Nana Beal, Nana Beal. Now, Nana Beal was a very staunch Catholic. We thank God for Catholics, amen. Very staunch in her faith. And Pastor Lincoln was standing at the gate and he was building his church at the time. And Nana Beal came and she put her hand on the show, uh, uh, put a, put a, she was passing by, she put her hand on her hip and she said, now what you're doing? What are you doing now? He says, Nana Beal, I'm building a church. And uh, she goes, why? He said, I'm building the church for you, Nana. Lincoln, I will never put my foot in this church. And she walked away. And this is how my dad shared it. So, um, some years passed down the line. Uh, David's dad was walking down the aisle. And behind uh, David's dad was this little lady. She was peep. She was hiding, actually. And uh, my dad was, was watching to see who the lady is. And then she, he said, Nana Peel, you're in the church. <laughs> she said, oh, come on now. Don't, don't tease me. Don't stop it. And she got baptized in this very tank. And she shared her testimony of how God built this church for a Nana Beal. Amen. Amen. And she got saved. She baptized. She got baptized at a very old age. But it was the most beautiful thing to see. No matter how old you are, everybody needs Jesus. Everybody needs to know Jesus because he's the only one who can bring you through this morning. He's the only one who can solve your problem. He's the only one who can heal the disease. He's the only one who can make that financial miracle happen. He's the only one who can set the prisoner free in Jesus' name. Chains broken in Jesus' name.